In this video, I'm going to show you how to use these scores to find percentages above, below, and between stuff. So, um, z-score. Don't forget the z-score formula that we've talked about in previous lessons. The z-score is any value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Um, instead of using s, we normally use sigma. Okay, somebody's being lazy, whoever made this worksheet. Anyway, look at uh, example one. A normal distribution has a mean of 170, standard deviation of 30. What percent of the data is below 190? Now, um, what we were doing yesterday, we were using this uh, chart to find percentages, and we were like counting up and down and whatever. Um, but that only worked for certain key values that happen to fall evenly on, this, on these lines. Now you have to be able to find percentages at any given value, and that's where we will use a z-score table and find whatever percentages we want, not just uh, the values that happen to fall perfectly on these preset lines. Okay, that's what the z-score chart does for us. So, let us find the z-score for this situation first. So the z-score is going to be, okay, what percent of the data is below 190? So um, 190 is our specific value, and then we need to subtract the mean of 170, and then we divide by the standard deviation of 30. Okay? Calculate that out and tell me what it is. 0. 0.667? Okay. So 0. 0.6, in fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and say 0. 0.67. Z-scores can really only manage two decimal places because that's the limitation of the chart that we use with it. Okay, so we'll always round to two decimal places. Any questions so far? Now, um, in order to use the chart to find the percentages that we want, first of all, let's use our proper notation. We want the percentage of data that is below 190, so less than... 190. Um, so we're going to find the percentage of z-scores that are below 0 0.67. Okay, and that should be the same thing. That should be the same percent. So the first question you always have to ask yourself, when I look at my chart, can I read the percentages right off the chart or do I need to subtract from 100? Okay, um, Molly, let me ad address this one to you. Is this a situation where we can read the percentages right off the chart, or do I need to subtract from 100? You can read them right off the chart. If it's, um, this chart is set up to give us values that are less than the value, all right? These are less than values. So here they're asking us to find uh, below 190. So uh, we're doing below 0.67. So we can read it right off the chart. If it is said greater than or above, that's when you subtract from 100. So here we go. Let's find the value of 0.67 and just read the percent right off the chart. Um, OK, so it was 0.67. So here's 0.6 right here. All right, there's 0.6. And then I'll, uh, the 7 brings us to this column right here. OK. So as a percent, that becomes 74.86%. So 74.86%, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Any questions on example one? OK, looking at example two. Normal distribution, mean is 266, standard deviation 16 what percentage of the data is above 240. So again, let's find our z-score. Um, okay, so 240 is our specific value. We need to subtract the mean, so minus 266, divided by the standard deviation. Skirt. Um, what is this z-score, wonderful children? Negative 1.63. Now, I, let me emphasize to you, rounding is going to be really important because that last decimal tells you entirely which column you're going to be in.
So if you round wrong, you're going to be in the entirely wrong column on this paper, and your answer is going to be like totally wrong. So you really, really, I mean, we're m most of us 11th graders. It's time to be able to round properly, OK? I, I'm going to hold you responsible for rounding right. So with that admonition, is this rounded properly? OK. So there's our z-score. Um, so here's our notation, which you must always use. We want the percentage of data that is above 240. So that means in terms of z-scores, that's going to be greater than negative 1.63. So Emily, let me ask you this. Am I going to be able to read these percentages right off my handy dandy z-score chart? Or is this a situation where I have to subtract from 100 first? Yep, yeah, this is the situation where you have to subtract from 100. Anytime it's above or greater than, that's when you have to subtract from 100. So we're going to have to do 100% minus whatever the chart says. So negative 1.63, we find it. Um, OK, so negative 1.63. Um, okay, is there a way to erase these marks that are here? Okay, so here's negative 1.6. The 3 tells me which column to look at. So 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, so that's 5.16%, which I must subtract from 100. So minus 5.16%. Percent. Um, help me out. What is that? 94.84%. Uh, so there you go. That's how you do that. Any questions, guys, guys, guys? Okay, let's, let's see if we can get one more problem done before we call it a day. Test scores on last on the last major test were normally distributed with a mean of 60. Ouch! Mean of 60 is pretty rough. And a standard deviation of 9. You made a 54. Uh, that hurts. OK, you made a 54. Now, so what's the z-score associated with your grade? So here we go. Z-score, your particular grade. So you got your 54 minus the mean of 60 divided by a standard deviation of 9. Um, tell me what that value is, wonderful children. Negative what, 0.67? Oh, negative 0 0.67. OK, so that's the z-score associated with your grade. Your very kind teacher, OK, you don't have to think of anyone in particular, but you have a, imagine you have a very kind teacher, and uh, they decide to curve your grades. Not unlike the Alex test. Um, she changes the mean to a 70 and changes the standard deviation to 5, but keeps the z-scores the same. OK, so the, this would be a, a way of curving your grades. OK, so, so she's changing the mean to, so what's your new score? So if the z-score is going to be negative 0 0.67, then that goes here in the formula. OK? We're trying to figure out what your new score would be. So we'll call that x. OK? And um, the mean is now 70. And the new standard deviation is 5. So this is a way of curving tests. So it's just a matter of solving this, and that would tell you what it's going to be. So you would multiply everything by 5. Um, as soon as I look up and see who's shuffling papers around, you're going to be last to leave. Be still. You guys know me about this. What is 5 times 0.67, guys? Negative 3.35. OK, like that is equal to x minus 70. What's the last step? Add 70 to both sides. So what's your new score? All right, which still isn't great, but it's better than a 54. All right, 
here endeth the lesson.